everybody. Welcome to Live at 5 TGIF. It is Friday, March 2nd, and I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Paul Wontorek, and there's a bomb cyclone happening outside. There's is that what they call it? There is, all day it's long. crazy weather in New York today. It is. And we are joined here in the studio by Caitlin Gallup, social hey, media manager. And, and who's a, our guest today? We have a great guest. We have an amazing guest that I'm so excited to talk with. Ivana Lynch is joining us from Disco Pigs yes. off Broadway. Yes. Excited to have her here. Very excited. But before we talk to Ivana, Caitlin, why don't you tell us about today's top five? All right. The first thing for today's top five is getting the band back together announces their initial casting. So Getting the Band Back Together is a summer musical coming yes. to Broadway. Yep. It's going to be the new Rock of Ages. Or, you know, it's going to be the new rock and <laughs> roll. Rock it's going to be the Jersey Guys show mm -hmm. that everyone will love. Yep. Uh, and they announced the casting. And speaking of Rock of Ages, uh, Mitchell Jarvis, <laughs> yes. who was fantastic as Lonnie in the original oh, cast of Rock of so Ages, good. will star as Mitch Papadopoulos. Oh, there was a sitcom with Papadopoulos. Well, also, was it Webster? It, Webster. Also, that's like yeah. a Trump guy, Papa, George Papadopoulos, right? A lot He's of Papadopoulos. Like one of the bad I'm pretty sure Webster lived with the Papadopoulos. <laughs> if anyone else is over the age right. of 40 yeah. watching. Oh, no, um, I've seen that. Jay Klotz, I think, was who actually took over the role of Lonnie. Oh, that's He right. also played oh, Lonnie God, on Lonnie's. Broadway, and he was in High Fidelity. It was hilarious. <laughs> and Lend Me a Tenor. He will play Bart Vickers, Paul Witte, who was in Amelie last season, and he's I remember him from once. Uh, we'll play Michael Sully, Sully, Sully Sullenberg. Michael Sully Sullivan. <laughs> Sawyer wow. Nunez from Funny Neverland will play Ricky Bling Goldstein. That's Tamika Lawrence, who is a yes. fantastic singer. Uh, she was in um, If That, I remember If That, and yeah, I guess she was in Come Away. Away. She's yep. playing Roxy. Brandon Williams uh, will play Tygen. And so preview start the Belasco Theater July 19th, opening set for August 13th, and there is more casting to come. So... You know, we're all talking we're about the spring shows, this summer. but we're going to get a really fun, uh, and it's about a guy who used to be in a high school band, and they kind of like get back together, get oh. the band back together. It's all exactly right. the title. But this show, interestingly, was created, they gathered a bunch of actors, and they like kind of improv some of it. Oh, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, so oh, it's written okay. by Ken Davenport, who's a producer of Once yes. on this Island, yep, yep. the Broadway show we talk about spring every day, Awakening. and the Grendel Shots, which is an improv name for all the people that worked I on it. I have heard of them. And Sarah okay. Salzberg, also who was in Spelling Bee. Also help. So anyway, That's this so is a cool. really cool show, and we're going to be talking about it this summer. Oh, yes. Um, something that's not going to be happening this happening this summer. NBC's Bye Bye Birdie Live, um, starring Jennifer Lopez, is now pushed back to 2019. Yeah. Are we ever going to see this? <laughs> <laughs> so this was supposed to happen in 2017 17 last originally. year. Yeah, and then it got pushed to 2018, and now. We're getting it in 2019. My theory from that NBC. reason why they pushed it was because it was too close to Greece. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Bye bye, Birdie and Greece are Greece Live right. was obviously Greece a was huge, incredible, yeah. smash hit, and I feel yeah. like NBC would have been immediately compared to Fox's Greece Live. Uh, totally. That's, so I feel like they're gonna have a little distance that makes now. Sense. And of course, we're told it's because of Jennifer Lopez's schedule. She's playing Rosie in the. In, she should be fantastic. Yeah, I'm sure in that she'll role. be wonderful. Spanish um, Rose. But maybe she's also she's been with A Rod for a while. Maybe they're getting married. Who knows? I love I that you're just sticking into the personal life. <laughs> just, are they the most beautiful couple together? They are pretty gorgeous Crazy, together. Crazy, disgustingly yeah. beautiful. Um, so bye bye birdie, 2019, this emoji. Or maybe 2020. <laughs> so maybe we 2020. We can't wait. <laughs> Whenever it is, we're very happy. Can't wait. All right, this week for Culturalist, we are ranking our top 10 Broadway stars that we would love to see on a fictional Big Brother. Now, my favorite thing <laughs> is dumb culturalists, <laughs> and I this was, this was my idea. idea. You, yeah. um, so Marissa Jarrett went ochre, Tony winner for Hairspray. You all know and love her. She won Celebrity Big Brother, which is crazy. Yeah. Uh, Nobody expected her to she win. Kind she kind of was like playing it. Okay, I've never seen Big Brother in my life. You're missing Until out. she joined. It's and so I was good. like, okay, I clearly have to see what this is. Yeah. So now I know what head of household is and all that Oh, all my that God. Crap. Welcome to the I, did, I did not <laughs> understand anything about it, but I watched it for her, and she won. Yeah. But she, she played it very quietly and then one her and Ross Matthews were sort of the final two mm -hmm. and now by the way they're all over Instagram stories so if you follow them <laughs> on Instagram they're live like every 20 minutes hey guys uh, I love them both anyway so we said wouldn't it be fun if there was a, a crazy big brother all Broadway edition and now you get to yeah. jo decide who would be in that and you place have some great choices. and the people that are ahead of are already <laughs> fascinating like I saw the list of who's ahead and I was like I would totally watch that <laughs> So go, go cast Do, the yeah, next yeah, get in there. Celebrity Big Brother Broadway edition.
All right, today we got new music from Hamilton and Frozen. Yeah, you have a lot of stuff to listen to this weekend if you haven't already. So we've been hearing about this. Lin-Manuel Miranda loves Weird Al Yankovic. Weird Al Yankovic loves Lin-Manuel Miranda. <laughs> and so now they have taken all of the best songs of Hamilton and put it into one of Weird Al's new parody songs called The Hamilton Polka. And it sounds exactly like you think it does. It's fantastic. Um, and also, Frozen, so Monster, if you watch this week's Broadway.com show, we, you get to see Casey Levy singing Monster. Yeah. Disney released another Frozen song. This time, it's Patty Murin and Jelani Aladdin. And it's, what do you know about love? It's a fun, it's a fun the, duet. Yeah. It. So it's, we have new Frozen music, new Lin-Manuel Miranda music, sort of. Um, but yeah. I love that you said that like a lot of music to listen to this weekend. It's like seven minutes of music. <laughs> yeah, sorry. But you can listen to it over and I over mean, all yes, weekend. Exactly. Enjoy. That's what I would have done. <laughs> all right. And last but not least, we have a new Broadway.com vlogger. Yeah, We do. And it's somebody that I really enjoy. Uh, Paul Alexander Nolan, who you saw in Bright Star mm -hmm. last on Broadway, is yeah. now the star of Escape to Margaritaville. Which we're very, very excited about. Yeah, yeah. And he's really great in the show, and he plays guitar, and he's just like a really fun guy. So his vlog starts next week. It is called Beach Bum. Perfect. Because he basically is. The I whole mean, show, yeah. he's in shorts and bathing suits and playing the guitar and drinking and yeah. having fun great with tourist vibes. women. Chill beach vibes. Uh, anyway, so that starts next week. You'll go backstage to the Marquee Theater and get to know the whole cast of the show, and it'll be every week for eight weeks. Fantastic. And that's all I got. Yeah. Well, Paul, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful Friday. I hope you do, too. Weekend. I'm going to go listen to the seven minutes of music over and over, <laughs> over all weekend. Over all weekend. Caitlin, why don't you tell us a little bit about our guests? All right. Um, Ivana Lynch is best known for her role as Luna Lovegood in the Harry Potter films, which earned her praise from both critics and fans. She recently starred as the title mm. character in the feature My Name is Emily, for which she received an IFTA nomination for Best Actress in a Leading Role. Her other recent film and TV work includes Dynamite, Sinbad for the, for the Sky, and Danny and the Human Zoo by Lenny Henry for BBC. Um, over the past few years, Ivana has been studying acting in Los Angeles, but right now you can catch her as Runt in Edna Walsh's Disco Pigs at Irish Rep um, running through this weekend. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ryan and Ivana. Hello, Ivana. <laughs> is, is it weird to sit here and listen to someone speak about well, you? Especially when it's like a lot of random indie projects that like nobody has seen. Great projects though. <laughs> Great stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank I you for have, I'm me. so excited. I had a comically awful morning this morning, but I knew that I was gonna be speaking with you today and that excited me all day. I'm so excited that's to chat so with nice. you. How I feel like though that's a New York thing though. You'll have an amazing day or yeah. one thing will go My wrong morning, and then everything will everything, go wrong. Everything went wrong. I, I like started things. this morning, I had a nosebleed at nine AM. I don't know what was happening in my life. <laughs> but all is good now. I'm talking to you <laughs> finally. How you are in disco pigs off broadcast. Broadway, Irish Rep. Mm -hmm. You started doing this in July of last year, right? You did it in London. Yeah. We and did so a you've been five involved, week run there. right? Yes. And now you're here. I think you're open till uh, Mar Sunday, March fourth, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. How how are you enjoying doing the show? How does it feel to be a part of this groundbreaking play? Um, I mean, yeah, it's been such a privilege. It's sort of this play has taken up the whole last year of my life because I auditioned originally for it in January and got cast. Um, I mean. Yeah, it's just I love working with like offbeat kind of writing, um, mm -hmm. and it's such it's it's brilliant writing. It's real it good is. literature, you know. And it's not often you get a chance to play with that kind of those kind of words in in film. So much of the exposition is done with the the film with the, right. <laughs> with the stuff that you see right. on camera. Whereas this is like so much more responsibility on the actors, and that's been really exciting. Yeah, but. and for if anyone doesn't know, so this play it premiered at the Edinburgh. F uh, Fringe Festival in 1997 was huge, launched like the careers of Killian Murphy and Eileen Walsh. Um, and so this is the 20th anniversary revival, restaging of it. Yes. Um, and so how, it's an intense show. Like you guys, <laughs> it is, it is, it's a little challenging in the beginning to like get used to like the language. Yeah. For anyone that doesn't know what the play's about, feel free to tell us a little bit yeah, about Yeah, well, Run. I think, yeah, I, th I think it is good to have some background info. Like for one thing, they, their language is sort of made up. So so you don't have to understand it. And it's best if you don't intellectualize it, if you don't try and understand every word, if you just go, 
I don't have to make sense of this. I can just feel it and experience it. And they rhyme everything. So, like, they call Cork City, which is a city in the South of Ireland, they call it Pork City. So some people don't get that till the very <laughs> end. <laughs> we're like, oh, we're talking about a yes, real city, though. <laughs> I wish I'd known that before, yeah. But it's just, um, so it's about these two teenagers, and it's actually based on a book, a real book about um, these two twins who grew up and decided they would be silent around everyone else. Mm. They would only talk to each other. And this b- this play is based off that, and it's except it's different in that they're not twins. They're just best friends, born on the same day, in the same place. Right. And they it's this thing of them... Be feeling vulnerable, feeling like the world doesn't like them, so they decide they're going to just wreck the place and not let anyone else in. And I think it's that thing is either you either have to be very vulnerable and let in that people maybe don't like you and, and feel constantly afraid, or you think you're the best thing ever mm-hmm. and everyone else sucks. And that's what they decide to do. But it's on the cusp of them. They've just turned 17. Right. And hormones starts to kick in. Sure. And yeah. Pig starts to develop feelings for Runt, and Runt is like, OMG, what are you doing? <laughs> right. I'm not, yep. did yep. not sign up for Known this. Known you my whole life. Yeah. 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 And it all kind of spirals. Right. There. And what drew you to uh, what drew you to this role? What made you want to take on Runt? Because like I said, it's not this isn't an easy thing to get through. I mean, it's <laughs> it's only about it's like 70 minutes or so, but you it's guys are fun. nonstop the whole time. Yeah. And so what what drew you to this role? What made you want to play her? Uh, I would say first of all the writing. I was mm-hmm. just when I first read it. I was like, what kind of weird <laughs> ass play has my agent just sent me? Like, right. I was just, I didn't understand yeah. it, but there were a few beautiful lines that I was just like, this is real poetry and it's really romantic. And I like things that are, I don't like, not over commercial, that they're very much a cult hit, like mm-hmm. that kind of vibe to it. Um, but then about her, I just, I like that she was so, so ballsy and so didn't care what people thought of her and she was brave and but she also had real vulnerability to her and w- the the key to her is that she's actually wants to be part of the world but she's just afraid no one will accept her mm-hmm. so I, I liked that that interesting conflict inner conflict in her yeah, yeah. is there something or would you say that you're drawn to roles where they are sort of outsiders or misfits is that a, is that a role you like to be in to, to bring those people alive definitely I think I like to play like I would say sort of defiant weirdos. So mm-hmm. people who are, who think their own way, they know who they are, but, and they're not making apologies about it. Right. You know, like totally. not, not just people who are odd and uncomfortable about it. It's like, I, can, I think because I like to embody that because I'm often not that. I often feel like the weird person in the room and I try to hide it. And it's nice to play characters who, th- I play characters who inspire me, who yeah. are like, young women who I would like to be. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah. No, yeah. totally. No, mm-hmm. And you've been doing this this production with your co-star Colin Campbell from yeah. the very beginning, right? Mm-hmm. How has your, are, are you two super close now? I can't imagine working with somebody in that yeah. intense environment. Would Some it? days we're like, I can't look at you anymore. Because we're actually, as <laughs> right. we're living in New York, we were like, the producer was like, do you guys want to live together? We're like, yeah, sure. And it was like, oh. It's so now your coworker, no. your roommate. We're your, getting on the yeah. subway together, yeah. we're going home together, and, and just right. sometimes like we were doing laundry together the other day and he like passed me like my pair of underpants and I was like <laughs> we know each other a little bit too well don't we this is like, we've gone intimate <laughs> yeah is. no like and it's great that it, it's kind of it's great in that we have so much trust yeah. like there was a, a moment on stage where uh, a fire alarm went off mid show lights up crazy everything and it's not kind of show where there can be a break right. in it there's no natural break to it and I absolutely panicked and I kept saying my lines <laughs> stupidly it was like there's no way we're just doing gonna a barrel play through, through the this. fire <laughs> so Colin kind of just like he's had more experience with stage um, he kind of just grabbed me and pulled me off stage and I really felt like thank you I felt this rush of and we had, we absolutely have that that shorthand uh, he definitely slags me off too much, and sometimes I have to be like, I'm not in the mood today. Do not yeah. mess with me. Yeah. But yeah, it's great. No, like any other working relationship, of course. Yeah. And you, have you, is this your first time living in New York, or you've lived here before? I've lived here for a couple projects. Uh, I did that one, you mentioned Dynamite, that was a New York based project. Gotcha. And do you like, do you like living in New York? Or? I love it. Do you? Yes, I do. What and do you love most about it? Um, I love that people just yell things out in public. <laughs> yeah. It gets a lot of like, <laughs> right? It's, it's, so it's great. Funny. Yeah. Oh my god, we were walking down the street. There's like a um a, po- a TV series filming in our block um mm-hmm. in Brooklyn, and we're walking down the street, and this man was walking by, and he just goes, "Man, I want to be in a movie," and he just like <laughs> yelled it out to the whole crew, and 
and kept walking. You know? No, it's great. I like that constant dialogue that New Yorkers Absolutely. have. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like you said, it's all of those sort of defiant outsider misfits are all here in one city, all kind of living together. Yeah. And so yeah. it's a great, it's a cool, it's cool really vibe. Cool. I have to say, I did a little, you know, I, I, I've followed you on Twitter and Instagram. Uh -huh. um, oh. and, and I am obsessed with Miss Lilac Puff. Yeah. She is a star. <laughs> Tell, she, she's when you adopted her, what was it, like four years yeah, ago four or years so? Ago. Yeah, and how has life been great. with her in oh, your life? She's so life changing? Sweet and wonderful. And she's so like not what you think of as a cat where they're like snobby and superior. She's like and and very well groomed. She's a total mess. I always have to She loves clean to just her. stare at herself in mirrors, right? I, I see didn't you have to notice. So <laughs> I get and that. I don't have like what a full life. length mirror in my in my house in London. But there's some in this Airbnb we're at, and she just sits and gazes Very at Very regally. Like yeah. Just and, <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, yeah, you're beautiful. But also, I like to think that she's doing, like, self-love affirmations. Yeah. No, absolutely. Just, yeah. And speaking, I, and you are you are a vegan. You are yeah. a vegan mm -hmm. activist. Um, yeah. How long have you been a vegan? I've been vegan probably about four years. I was vegetarian since I was 11. Mm -hmm. And then when I moved to L.A., I started, like, doing campaigns with like animal charities and then people would be like, why aren't you vegan? And I'd be like, I don't know. And so, <laughs> Let me uh, look into that. Yeah, yeah. and once I yeah. started reading this stuff, I was like, oh, wait, I'm actually a vegan in my soul, so I better make those adjustments. So, totally. And yeah, so. and New York is an amazing place to be vegan. It is. Yeah. And you have a, you do a podcast, I The do. Chick Peeps, right? And I'm about with you up. and your friends. Yeah, of course. And yeah. at, did this passion project just from you were enjoying the way you were living and share this with people? Well, so I found that I was really overwhelmed when I went vegan because I found that I couldn't do anything right. Like it, when I would do, when I would post about vegan something, people would be like, well, you wear leather shoes. And I was like, it's so hard to do it at once. It's so overwhelming. Yeah. And I've kind of gotten the hang. I have feel like, I hate to say the word master, but I sort of have mastered living a normal vegan life. And I wanted to help people in that transition phase. And I also found because of like my job and my profile mm -hmm. i kept having like vegan organizations charities and magazines reach out to me and be like they want to interview me and i was like wait you're so interesting i want to interview you so yeah no it's a great idea i have i have all the contacts within the vegan community and the industry so uh yeah i just was like i would just like the opportunity to talk to these people Fantastic. Ask questions. and like yeah even next month i'm going to an elephant sanctuary and it's like that is such a cool yeah experience. the, the experiences you get from just having this yeah, project yeah and to talk to somebody who loves animals that much that they've devoted their lives to saving elephants like that's totally. an opportunity it's yeah. beautiful and i i know we want to take some questions from some viewers and fans um but i just i i'm sure they want to ask you about harry potter i totally get it no way um, <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to say, obviously, yeah, like uh, Hermione Granger was always my favorite character. Really? But but a very, very close second was That's Luna Lovegood. And you. I was so nervous. But then you arrived and you were amazing and incredible. <laughs> what is your favorite memory from that experience? Favorite memory? Um, oh, wow. Gosh, I wish I wish I'd kept a journal in those days. Um I think the read through, like, there's loads, but the read through was so exciting for me because it was when I met all of the cast at once. Mm -hmm. It was so overwhelming. And I was terrified because I was like, I've respected these people for years, and now I have to be somebody and right. I have to say my lines. <laughs> but yeah, they were just really welcoming and lovely. And it, I, I, I just have very clear memory of that day, even because I'm friends with, like, you know, the other cast now. And I can recall the outfits they were wearing oh, that wow. day. Yeah, because it was just. So yeah, that burns itself right mind. away. Yeah. yeah, and then also when I met J.K. Rowling for the first time, mm -hmm. I just get it. Loved yeah. <laughs> her. Yeah. She's such a beautiful presence, and she. When I met her, she like she doesn't have you know. Like sometimes you meet famous people, and they're just like, "Hi, nice to meet you," and they're like off. It's a little Remind bit of a, yeah, else. absolutely. But she was so like focused and like generous with her energy when she was talking to me. Like she wasn't thinking about anything else, mm -hmm. and that was like. For the from the mind that created Harry Potter, it's like that's really yeah. incredible. It's so impressive when it they is. when someone that can just look you in the eye, remember your name, talk to you yeah. like a human is yeah. yeah, it's very special. Yeah. Well, what, Caitlin? What do the fans <laughs> want to know? Okay. Well, we have a bunch of questions, so we're gonna get through as many as we can very quickly. All right. First one: Have you seen Harry Potter and the Cursed Child? I have. Yes, I saw it in London. Um, I loved it. Yeah. I, I saw it before I read the book. 
and I I did get pangs of jealousy. I was watching. <laughs> I was like, why did we never learn proper magic, mm -hmm. like traditional <laughs> magic? And the tricks right. are incredible. And um, yeah, I mean, I was a bit shocked by some of the plot points. Yeah, I I, I don't really f buy all of it as canon, even though I know it is. Right. But even though she's involved, it's yeah, still yeah. yeah it's For a me, it, more. until I read it as a book, book, not a playbook, as mm. a fiction prose, whatever. Yeah, it's hard for me to. Uh, I don't want to spoil it, but like sure, yeah. that one thing of like somebody having a child, being like, I can't. My <laughs> mind just can't go there. Yeah. When I reread the books, I can't slot that in. I just, yeah, no, yeah. I'm but totally I, I love it as a piece of theater and and to kind of revisit revisit the world and how their children would be. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen it? I have not yet. I have tickets for April fourteenth. I will be there all day. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. can't wait. Yeah. It's great. All right, Alec would like to know what do you or what slash do you have a dream theater role? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I do. It's a really obscure play. Like nobody knows it, but it's called Calico, and it's about uh, James Joyce's daughter. Mm. Um, and it's yeah, straight play, and it's just about like she's this woman who was kind of covered up by history because she uh, apparently had schizophrenia. But I kind of think that family was mad. And uh, because she was a woman at that time, her creativity wasn't nurtured and wasn't like she wasn't able to express herself the way she wanted. It was very much she was stifled. And it, I, can, I think it kind of came out as madness to them. Yeah. And yeah, I just love that play. It's really interesting. I love character studies plays. Yeah. yeah. And do you think stage work is going to be something that you continue to like always make sure you are pursuing or like yeah, do you have Broadway to. dreams? Oh, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't do a musical, though. <laughs> no musicals, just, just plays. No, like, <laughs> I love musicals, but I don't have a voice. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find In out. In my we'll head, see. I do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, I like to dance, but no. I, I don't know. I'd love to, yeah, stage. I mean, you learn so much. It's it's, it's a lot tougher than film. Sure. Like, uh, for your imagination, you have to constantly be refilling yourself with new yeah. ideas. And then just physically. And your body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, but I did say to Colin, I was like, after this, freaking mad two-hander <laughs> i'm gonna do a period play where they drink tea and talk and they can't <laughs> move because they're uh, wearing skirts <laughs> yeah. they're wearing big bustles and nobody is throwing each other i think that's a stage. great idea yeah. for, your, for your sanity <laughs> yeah that's amazing um corinne would like to know what is the biggest difference between london audiences and u.s audiences oh um People get quite offended here, yeah. Mm, um, interesting. We'll walk out, yeah. Wow. We'll, yeah, not yeah. like, you know, there'll be two or three. But, like, I feel like in London they give it more of a chance and mm -hmm. they more, like, uh, maybe it's because of the political climate here. People are really on edge. Right. So Nerves frayed yeah, a little, yeah. yeah. And, like, our characters are not nice people. Like, they're beating people up. They're stealing. They're verbally abusing their parents. Like, mm -hmm. I had a hard time getting into the role, even just that, like, how rude they are to their parents of being like, how do I sympathize with this person? And there's some times where people, like, and you see them kind of, because we're all, <laughs> the, all the play, we're You're looking out at the audience. Right, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And you see them get up very pronounced, like, I am going to leave <laughs> with my backpack, <laughs> and I am not coming back. <laughs> yeah. um, so that sometimes. But then also, um, uh, pe people don't, like, I think they surrender to not, they're not, trying to understand because they, the references are so Irish they're like I don't know what that means mm -hmm. and they more when they are a, like kind of raucous audience they're very giggly and really into it yeah 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 that's cool um, and final question what female performers or fictional characters inspire you oh my god there must be so many. Fe oh, <laughs> fictional characters. Ah, I wish I had uh, 10 minutes to think about this. Um, oh, like in theater? You and know, it was Brittany. female performers female and performers or fictional characters. Yeah. Fictional characters. Female, can I say Britney? I love Britney. Britney. I mean, that's terrible. No, no Britney, Why did please. I, you don't I just have love Britney. I'm I sorry. Love Britney I love too. that. Please, and you I'm are never with a fellow gonna be Britney. Over her. Good. <laughs> no, I no. love Britney. And I get that she's I believe not... you've. I think I've seen an Instagram where you went as "Hit Me, Baby, One More Time," okay. Britney. Wow, you went back. <laughs> you went back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I did. Um, I love her. She's I just, fantastic. But I know she's yeah. not the performer she was, but I love that she's always 
honest, you mm-hmm. know. And I, exactly. I, I don't want people to be flawless. I don't mm-hmm. want people to be perfect. No, it's boring when it's flawless. Yeah, yeah. 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 But in terms of like actors who I really like at the moment, um, I really love Elizabeth Moss, and yes. I actually saw her on stage yeah. a few years ago in. Um, it was like a feminist play. Oh, do you know what you're um, talking yes, about? I do. With and that. Uh, the Wendy Wendy Wasser, um I know exactly. You what know what talking. play I'm I talking do, about? Yes. But yeah, I saw her. I, and the I watched, Heidi Chronicles. Yeah, that I'm was sorry. it. That was it. Yes. I love that. Um, and so I saw her. Well, I watched The Handmaid's Tale. I was just mm-hmm. so She's blown incredible. away by her performance. Yeah. I also know you're a big fan, and I know because I am as well of Kim Wexler. I'm better call oh, Saul. Oh, she's, she's I've never my, been more inve- uh, emotionally invested in a fictional character. Right? Okay, I'm so <laughs> glad you brought that up because I was struggling there. She's amazing. She's amazing. Leah Seahorn as her. So is subtle. Just, Everything mm. she does. Like yes. and I love what about that show is that you don't know what they're gonna do before they do it. No. You're watching her and you're like, Oh, she has an amazing and plan, so but I don't know about what it her is. and like she it's just I'm just sad just that it's know. like they they've essentially that friggin show essentially <laughs> tells you that everything's going don't to be care awful. About any of these people they're not going to be together he's yeah, going to lose the, i know his, his it rakes me over the life. coals i know it's, but you still watch <laughs> it i love it yes. yeah that i loved that her performance and i tell her i tweet at her quite a lot <laughs> and she favorites them i know and then it just feels so justified yeah, yeah. Well, we yeah in soul soul right oh, here oh wait and now you're kind of stimulating i did <laughs> last one that show i watched uh can I, I can't, the title has a swear word. Um, Won't oh, say Oh, go it. ahead. Oh, wait, it, on Netflix. Yes. Yes. I see. End of the world. Yes. End of the, mm, the world. The end of the F word world. And yeah. uh, I loved, uh, um, what's the character's name? J- Alyssa. Alyssa. And I actually auditioned for that role. I remember reading oh, yeah. that and being like, and I know you're not supposed to admit that, but I, yeah. I, I read the script and being like, this is so amazing. It's so strange and like, uh, like dark, but funny. Um, but she just so has that attitude down mm-hmm. and she doesn't care. And uh, yeah, I feel like you can't really fake that. It's amazing. Fantastic. Yeah, there's a few. Points. Well, thank you so much for joining Thanks. us. It's been so wonderful chatting with you. You have made my day. Oh, and I'm make glad. sure <laughs> and make sure you go see uh, Disco Pigs yes. at the Irish Rep through Four Sunday, more, March 4th. Yes, go. You're going to love it. You won't walk out. Don't, don't. <laughs> you want, you're going to be one of the people that you stays. Can. Um, but you can if you want. But thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Of course. Great Caitlin, why don't you tell us about our guest on Monday? All right. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in. You can watch Live at 5 every weekday live, 5 p.m. right here on Broadway.com's Facebook. Or if you're a fan of podcasts, you can listen and subscribe to the Live at 5 podcast wherever you get your podcast. Um, join us next week whenever we chat with stars from Wicked the band's visit, Love Never Dies, Once on This Island, lots of great shows. Have a great weekend, y'all, and we'll see you next week.